Hey y'all, I hope y'all are doing well this week. So there is quite a big project going on at my house right now in the landscape. We're doing a lot of different things that I wanna to talk to y'all about in this video. So you have heard me talk about my friend John, who's a horticulturist, who is a garden designer, who has been my mentor in the garden for all the years that I've been gardening. He was like the first person that I met that talked to me about how to design a garden and a garden bed. Um, and so anyway, he and his grandson, Ian, came over to the house today to help me extend some garden beds. And I'm gonna show y'all those in the video. And um, also we have transplanted some things, just some things that needed to get done in my garden that honestly, I mean, I could do it on my own, but it would take me so much time and it's just so much, you know, energy. So it's wonderful to just have a couple of extra sets of hands. And I also really like to get John's design eye and his expertise about plants anytime I can. So let me talk to y'all a little bit about what some of these projects are that we're gonna be doing for the next, for sure tomorrow. And depending on how much we get done tomorrow, maybe Monday. Um, so it's really exciting and I can't wait to show y'all. A big accomplishment that we had in the garden was that we, John and his grandson actually, dug out the grass here and curved this bed to meet the original bed line right there and added a whole lot of dimension to these back beds. And they did the same thing on this side too and curved it and then extended the bed a little bit out from that tree right there. Uh, so these beds were originally just straight across and they had some old knockout roses next to the railings. And also they had some very old Indian hawthorns planted on either side of the back steps. So this I think is gonna be just really, really nice and a great update. Uh, and so the trees that we've planted here are called Eagleston Holly trees. I have one over here on this corner, one here, here, and then one over there on that curve right here. And so the great thing about these trees is that you can leave them in their natural form and they'll grow about probably 20 feet tall and wide. So they're really like a mid-sized growing tree or you can do what I'm planning on doing and you can make them more of a formal structure in your garden. And so what you do is you just allow them to continue to grow, keep the tops kind of topped off at a point and allow the bottom to fill out. And then eventually you have a tree with a conical shape up at the top and it's very tight and um, just really, really beautiful and a kind of a formal look. And it kind of looks like a topiary. But um, anyway, it's just a really cool, I think, structure in your garden. And so what we did underneath these Eagleston hollies is we put a compilation of agapanthus and the agapanthus will eventually fill in and it will be sort of filling in this entire space and that entire space over there. So we used the blue agapanthus, the traditional um, color blue that you see, they say blue, but it's really more of a lavender. We used the ever white agapanthus, three of those, three of the blue, three sapphire. I'm not as familiar with the sapphires, so I'm gonna have to pull up a picture and show you. So we did that on either side, which is gonna just be such a show in the spring and summer when these agapanthus get bigger and they start blooming on either side of this walk up into my porch it's just going to be like boom and it's just going to like welcome you to come up to the front steps i can't wait so i've had this in mind for a while and about digging out these beds planting some eagleston hollies in here and to be honest every time i thought about it i was just like golly that's going to be so much work it desperately needs it it's it's begging for a bed extension right here and some curves but i just 
I have so much else too that I'm thinking about. It was not something <clears throat> that was on the top of my list of wanting to do. Digging out grass is the my least favorite thing about gardening. I don't know if y'all agree with that or not, but I find it to be so tedious, so laborious. Um, it's just not fun. <clears throat> and so I have my friend John who enlisted his grandson, Ian, who's 20. And so they came over and they did it for me and I'm going to pay them. But it was so nice and refreshing to actually just get to sit there for a little while yesterday and the day before and kind of just watch things come together in my garden without me having to exert a whole ton of energy on it. It was just a treat. All right, now let me show you something else that, that John has helped me with. And that is the placement of these heuchera coral bells underneath this tree here had them spaced out underneath the front of the tree and John came over and as always he has so much insight for me that he comes and he just refines what I already have a lot of the time and so that's what happened and he he spread them out for me helped me arrange them and we ended up carrying them all the way back to a little further here in this natural area and I just really am excited about it because it's sort of gonna be like an unexpected pop from, a, from the angles of my back porch, from the golf course. It is, I mean, you just can't get any better in my opinion than colorful foliage that comes back every year the blooms are not not anything at all hardly so you know you're not dealing with a whole bunch of effort and maintenance um and so i'm just feeling really really good about this we put the bird bath here in the middle as sort of a focal point and there in the background i have some oak leaf hydrangeas planted there's three right now there so they'll eventually fill in and take up that whole spot Okay, and over here, I'm real happy with this bed line because what we did was we took out areas of the grass here that came to a point and also the same thing over here. The grass kind of just came into a point that didn't really make a whole lot of sense uh, right in front of this Japanese magnolia tree. And so what John and Ian were able to do was give me just a really clean line all the way across and it came, comes to meet where the grass originally had a curve there. So we just kind of created more of a soft curve. One of the things we did yesterday was we placed some hydrangeas here in the back natural area. So as you see now, there's a drift of hydrangeas over here in the back. So we placed an endless summer hydrangea between the two pines. Endless summer, endless summer. Bridal wreath spirea, which has a really great blue tone. That was here. That we ha that's obviously that was original to the landscape. But look at how great it's doing. I chopped it all the way back to about a foot over the winter and cleaned out all the dead wood and put some Osmocote fertilizer around and it has just taken off. I did the same to these over here too. And what I love so much is that it's got that silvery blue foliage that looks really nice with the broad green leaf of the hydrangea. So we have another endless summer here. Two Merit Supremes here and here. The blooms of these will be hot pink, really, really deep pink. And then we put this one here yesterday. It was actually over in front of the cherry tree. 
and I just didn't love the way it looked. It kind of looked a little messy. So we moved this here. This is an original Endless Summer. That one right there, I believe, is a Blushing Bride. So a Blushing Bride, it is white, and then it kind of fades into this really soft, powdery pink. So it's really pretty. Um, all of these bloom on old and new wood, except for the Merit Supremes, which are only old wood bloomers, which is kind of a bummer because I cut them way back, not knowing that they were old wood bloomers. So I don't know what is gonna happen in the spring. I may not have, I, I'm not real sure what the blooms are gonna do. Hey y'all, so it is Saturday around lunchtime and I am out here in the yard because for the last three days, my friend John has been at my home, at my house with me with his grandson, Ian. They have been helping me do quite a bit of work over here that was just too much for myself to do alone. Well, I was talking to John yesterday afternoon and we just do that a lot, like bounce ideas off of each other and he really does help me like see things from a different perspective sometimes. And he mentioned to me that it would really be a good idea to open up my front yard and the front of my house if we removed these two island beds in the front lawn. Now, I know you're thinking this is coming out of nowhere, and yes, you are right. But as I kind of thought about it for a minute or two, I realized that is absolutely right. Like the garden beds in the front lawn, they are not contributing to the garden in the way that I envision the garden. And I do think that it will clean up the view from the street of my home, open up the front of the house. You'll be able to see the front porch better. And to be honest, these front beds just really kind of look a little bit messy to me. Sometimes, no matter how far you've gone down a path, you gotta be willing to turn around and, and make changes and evolve. So we're gonna be taking out these two front island beds. I've salvaged um, a good deal of plants that I wanted to keep out of this island bed and we'll be finding a new spot for them in the landscape. So I hope y'all enjoy. here in the front having a popsicle waiting on Ryan to get home from work and when he gets home he has no idea that we took out the two front beds today but I'm sure by now he's used to coming home and seeing that things have completely changed from the time he leaves in the morning to the time he comes home 
I am actually really excited about this because I think it is going to really reduce my workload. I really think that this is going to open up the front of the house and honestly I like the way the house looks better now that there's not so much blocking your view. Uh, we will be laying sod in the front and I may plant another tree or two. Haven't really gotten there yet but I am really excited about this new development. And I hope you guys are too. Um, so anyway, I hope y'all have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.